What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with episode number 42 of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday, streaming on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to your podcast, breaking it down on music, marketing, what, money, culture, culture, content. all that good stuff, content, just having a good time, man. And today we got to talk about these Spotify features. We can go a super deep dive, a full episode one day, just talk about these Spotify features. So, but we want to talk about some key features that got everybody talking. Yep. yep. Because the platform is changing. And if we want to get straight to the point, we can just start with Ja'Cory saying, I told you so. You want to go there? Yeah, man, I love a good I told you so. Right, let's let's I, get right I, into it. I live it. for a good I told you so. All right. So, man. one of the biggest, I don't want to say the biggest, but one of the more prolific feature mm-hmm. updates is the announcement of Spotify's clips feature. That mm-hmm. is what they're calling it, right? So yep. essentially what they're going to allow artists to do is to upload short form videos, 30 second videos to their profile to like add more context to a song or an album or, you know, just to kind of show your personality a little bit. Now, you, know, you might be thinking, oh, that's cool. But where's the I told you so come in, mm-hmm. you know? And we've been telling you guys for months that short form content is the new language. And, you know, like most good languages, it starts to spread. And you realize you travel to places and you still got to speak the same language. You know what I'm saying? Once you hit these foreign soils, you know what I'm saying? And so now Spotify has adopted the language of short form content, which to me says that more than likely at some point the others are going to do it too. You know, maybe their own versions, but at the very least, one of the biggest ones is doing it, which is enough. You know what I'm saying? So now your short form content skills doesn't just apply to TikTok. It doesn't just apply to YouTube. It doesn't just apply to social media, which ours like to be. I'm not a social media guy. Well, I got to do these social media things. It's like, well, now you see why. Because the streaming platforms are adopting social media platform methods. And it's probably going to work the same way. You know? Preach, Pastor. Preach. Mm. So, yeah, we told y'all, man. You know? So what you're saying is TikTok is Great Britain. Okay. <laughs> and and there's some imperialist okay. who just invaded the rest of the world. <laughs> and now everybody's speaking English. Yeah. That's that's what it is. And we all eating, you know, beans and toast. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the drinking gray tea, bro, like, you know. <laughs> I don't even want to go too far in that direction. <laughs> but everybody is speaking TikTok now. Yep. Everybody's speaking TikTok. They've invaded. They've imperialized, if that's a word. It is a word because I said it. Uh, you know, I I got to think about like what's a word and what's not a word. It's like, hey, bro, I used to tell my mom, if this Shakespeare guy can create words that we now talk about, how come I can't create words? Yeah, Webster just throw some shit out there, here, man. I'm like, I just gotta believe him. You know, hey, well, Webster was a basically like a a content creator. You know what I'm saying? He just, oh, let me organize these thoughts <laughs> and give you the thoughts. So you got to kind of give Webster some credit. But <laughs> with that feature, like, I think people. Our artists are underestimating why it's going to be so valuable, but also I think people are underestimating how this is going to affect TikTok in the long, no, Spotify in the long term. Yeah, yeah. So, number one, the value is okay. I'm showing my personality on the platform where the music is. Mm-hmm. We think, oh, the friction is low to go over from TikTok to Spotify in comparison to what we've seen before. Well, you're already on Spotify now. All right, so the same way you can be popping on TikTok and then your sound will get traction, well, your song will get traction on Spotify at some point. So you have that. Two, with that being said, do I want to say that? I'm going to say that one third. Two, now it's going to be up to you to be able to be creative, to still have high quality content, Yeah. right? Yeah. That doesn't feel like it's messing up Spotify's platform because Spotify is they're a little different. I don't think they're going to be as tolerant about the experimentation that took place on TikTok to start to allow things to bubble to the top of what's good and what's not. That's going to be interesting. So you're probably going to have to make sure that your your content is on of a certain quality without the leeway that you had on TikTok. Because that otherwise will just take over and make it way too social. Yeah. Right. But third, I think at some point, if this is successful, we might find Spotify ads become a real thing again. Like the regular audio ads? Not the audio ads. It's going to be a new type of ad. Oh, God. The same way that we can 
advertise in the Instagram feed, yeah. the TikTok feed, the stories, that's going to become a thing on yeah. Spotify. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because this is setting the stage. If this is successful, that will allow them to actually compete with ads in a way they haven't been able to compete. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's true. And all right, the, the, the thing about it that was the most well, what I like the most about it is that this is the first time that Spotify is giving artists a feature that allows them to communicate with their audience on Spotify. Yep. Right. And so that's been a huge, um, that's been a huge factor for a lot of people just not fucking with Spotify. It's like, man, I got a million monthly listeners. I can't say nothing to none of them. I don't have the data to retarget. And, but now you can, I guess it's like you said, I almost use Spotify as a, like any other platform. Hey, let me use Spotify to push my million monthly listeners over to Instagram, TikTok, whatever, or just just to say hey in platform and let them know, you know, I'm I'm kind of here because yep. I'm curious to see to your point about the quality control, what the parameters are going to look like. Because I remember when they did the Spotify rap, right, and they let artists upload the 30 second video to go into that route, which was them testing it out. Yep. I remember they had like certain things you couldn't talk about or say, and so like you couldn't be trying to push people off platform. You couldn't put like logos and links, you know, what I'm saying like icons in your video. So it had to be like very like clean. I'm like, hey, man, like, you know, this is the box of what you can talk about in this video, right? So I'm assuming they're going to implement, like, those same types of guidelines on here, at least for this early stage, right? Because, like you said, I don't think they want it to be as, like, loose of a canon as TikTok is. I don't think I don't think Spotify is ready for that, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, and then most artists wouldn't even put the output out to do it, right? So it would, it would get dominated very quickly by the artists that are, are like that, you know, like the, the Nick D's and the ISO Kenny's of the world, you know what I'm saying? We're moving right. really quickly and to take that shit over. So yeah, because then the labels are starting to plan because their artists aren't doing it. Yeah, too big. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so yep. so I think they're gonna. They're, my guess is they're gonna work to find that balance. But I mean, I personally like it, man. Like I said, bro, artists, you can finally talk to your audience. You can show your personality on it. Uh, I was reading on the features early and just seeing some of the plans they have for it in terms of it, like you know, popping up at the top of people's like search bars and, and, and being fed into the algorithm like the music is. So it's, it's going to you know be a, I'm assuming like a good discovery tool, yep. probably secondary and then be a good like fan engagement tool, like primary, you know what I'm saying? Like here's a way for you to just kind of like talk to people. It's like the more advanced version that that note that you can put on your song on Spotify, you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah. yeah. To me, it's like a more advanced version of that. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Cause I don't know, I don't know, man. I would love to know if those notes actually work. I have, feel like I haven't seen artists using them in a while. You know what I'm saying? But um, to me, it's just a bit a better version of that. Well, I think this will actually help things like that become more impactful. Yeah. Because the thing is, you had this note, which by itself it seems cool because, like even the artist pick, it seems cool. But if my fan experience on this platform is truly never to receive any communication from the artist, I don't ever register. Yeah, you ain't thinking about it. Yeah, I'm not thinking about it. I'm just not looking for it because I don't expect to hear from them. So I'm not even looking. Even if it says artist pick, I'm not even thinking truly if they picked that. Oh, this person really liked this song. Right. Versus if you posted that and said, this is my song for you on Instagram or TikTok, then I would feel like, oh, this artist really believes that this is a song that I should be listening to, right? Yeah. Or they want me to. So creating other forms of engagement where on the platform, people feel like the artist is communicating this to me is going to help them pay more attention to other features that probably didn't really make the impact that you would have thought. Yeah, right. that's true. So it's like now you could build like a true funnel around it. Like you could have little text. Yeah. Pushing people to the artist pick, pushing them to a playlist to that has your short, your clip in it. Like you could build a real like, yeah, like fanning has been falling on there. And now you know it, it was a, a you know not to get ahead, but like there was one of the new updates that kind of emphasized like Spotify has like the whole like merch thing on on in there, right? And like I've been seeing like merch become a lot more like prominent on artist profiles over the last like couple of months. So I mean now that they announced it, I I, I get why, but I see that they're making the steps to make. Spotify more of a fan engagement platform, which is like I said, been one of the biggest complaints of it for since as long as it's been around. You know what's crazy? People, I've seen all these apps. Mm. People reach out to me for my opinion to build, or um, or wanted my me to be like a marketer for these apps where they have a platform and people can stream your music on the platform. People can buy your merch on the platform. They have a feed where people can comment on a platform. People have been pushing these ideas for years now. 
And it's the easiest for Spotify to just become this platform. Like Spotify could and should be everything that an artist needs. You have everybody here. All right. If you made it easier and better for merch to be purchased and tickets to be purchased where it was a true viable option and people could truly um like communicate with their fans through that and process, like you might take control of the process and whatever in some form or fashion. Mm-hmm. Like that's great for you revenue wise. Yeah. You literally can become my house, right? Where everything lives out of. They're in the best position to do that. Now there might be implications on other sides of the business why they don't want to do that or I don't know, maybe the labels have been pushing them away from it, but they have been best positioned to be the the place where people go and have a 360, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No pun intended, with artists and be a part of every part of the business yeah. in a way. Yeah, and that, that's what I like about this this feature uh, rollout or the feature rollouts is that it feels like Spotify is finally embracing its position as a marketing tool, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully. Um, because I mean, we talk about it a lot, right? Where you know, artists have their 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 complaints. You know, um, a lot valid about the platform in terms of like payouts and things like that. I've always kind of just looked at Spotify as just another marketing tool, right? If we can use this to build an audience up, and you know, hardest part, like I was saying earlier, was always like figuring out a way to push them off Spotify to other stuff because we couldn't, you can't talk to them directly. So now they fix a lot of that, right? Like now they have things like the clips. They even have another feature. Um, it's called something called like fan first. So, and they try to like identify like your biggest fans and then make sure they get like email updates and things around you pretty consistently. Right. And I've been seeing it a little bit with some artists like I follow. Yeah. So it's like, they're finally embracing it as like a full like marketing site. Hey, we have organic for you, which is the algorithmic playlist. We have paid for you, which is marquee and, and discovery ads. We have, um, you know, I guess organic too, could be like content. And we have a, something for you to follow that too, because you can sell tickets and merch on your platform. Yeah, it's gonna take time for the, all that to develop in a way that yeah. is really significant. But them not having these things pretty much continues to clarify that they have never been in the business of selling the artists, all right? If anything, they've been selling fans and consumers because they were looking at themselves more as a radio. Mm-hmm. All right. And the radio value, it comes from the people who are listening to it, the amount of people who are listening to it. And then it becomes a kind of way for other people to market themselves on, which it makes sense to start out that way. I can't even fault them on that. But now to me, in terms of revenue and possibilities, they have the position to be a platform for artists. Yeah. All right. You're at the threshold where everybody goes to. Y'all are already number one. So if you can be a place where I ain't, and well, rightfully so, then get cuts um, of other parts of the business because you're allowing me to sell more merch directly just to better um, understand where my fans are coming from and somehow optimize which of those fans see tickets for these shows and mm-hmm. things like that. Then, like, why would I go to another platform? Yeah. It's, it, it's hard for anybody to even build anything comparable to that because it's, it's really difficult to get to that point. Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully this is a right another step in the right direction. But switching to another feature is the DJ AI. All right. So how do, how would you explain the DJ AI like in short? I mean, it's, to me, it sounds like AI shuffle. You know what I'm saying? Like I still don't completely understand it yet because my Spotify hasn't updated to why I haven't. Mine hasn't either. Yeah. But so EJ, shout out to EJ, the editor. If y'all want to know who, oh yeah, who, who kills y'all with the, with the headlines. Yeah, that's headline shawty out there, the headline goat. But personalization at, at the heart of what we do at Spotify. This is their quote on the new AI DJ. Just think of fan favorite playlist like Discover Weekly or our annual wrapped campaign. The beauty of these experiences is our ability to deliver the right piece of music for the exact moment in time and maybe even connect you with the next your next favorite artist in the process. We're building on that innovation by harnessing the power of AI in an entirely new way. And today we're excited to share that we're taking our personalization to a whole new level with DJ. So what's this all saying? All right. We're going to, to me, it's a glorified radio station. And I mentioned EJ because he said his girlfriend uses it a lot. So I think it's to me, 
that's a proven case, a real world case where we might often say, all right, that sounds cool, but are people going to really use it? Well, there's already some people who are using it seriously mm-hmm. and allowing it to select the music and and control their discovery process. Right. Yeah. So and I, and I think Gary V alluded to this years ago when he was like he was a little bullish on voice. It really hasn't taken over to the extent he thought yet. But he was saying when people are no longer searching the search engine and I'm going to Google to search it and I see like 10 options on a page, you think that's a little bit. Well, what what do you think is going to happen where people just say, hey, Siri, do X, Y, Z or hey, Alexa, do X, Y, Z. And then they just give them an option. All right. It's like, oh, uh, when I when we were in that other office the other week and I was like, hey, Alexa, play some little baby. I didn't control whether it went to Amazon or Spotify. All right. It could have just played enough. I forgot what I said the, uh, the other week. I think I said play like jazz or something. And it didn't tell. I didn't decide which jazz artist it played. Yeah. Right. So it's like, how do you create visibility in a world where you're not even competing with eyeballs anymore? You just, I don't know. Do we just say you're competing with ears? But like people can't see you unless they happen to hear you yeah. because the the platform is choosing for you. So I think that's something that sounds cool for consumers. I don't quite see. Like if it seems like it's a little troubling for artists, like it makes things even more competitive to be at the top. Yeah, I mean, I think if it works the way they're marketing it, because their big thing for it is like this is almost like Discover Weekly, but a little bit more personalized to yeah. you based on your old music taste. Mm-hmm. Which now, that, as I said out loud, it's like, but isn't that the appeal of Discover Weekly is that we're learning your music taste and recommending you new things, right? So. I, my my only thinking behind this is is pretty much what you said, man. I think Spotify is saying that users don't want to have as much control over the, the, their discovery process as they did on Spotify. Because that was Spotify's big thing in the beginning, right? Like, you have complete control over your discovery process, you know. Um, and they failed at it. They did. Terrible. Like, yeah. they, they weren't great discovery engine. Yeah. Better playlisters. Like, TikTok killed the discovery game. Yeah. Yeah. Man, man, well, I, I will give Spotify that they're they're better than the other DSPs at Discovery. Like Apple's Discovery the engine is basically yeah. move titles. Move. I only Pandora might be the closest. Like Pandora is yeah. probably was the yeah. best to me. Yeah. To be honest, where Pandora is the best at like staying in one vibe. Yeah, for sure. And SoundCloud, SoundCloud's probably the SoundCloud. I guess they didn't consider that a DSP. Yeah, uh, that Discovery they probably at their height did Discovery better. Yeah, yeah. right. It was just more of a cultural thing. I don't even think it was all technological. It was just yeah. it was just the setup of it. Yeah. But I mean, and then there, I don't even look at Pandora as a DSP to be honest. I think of it just differently as like radio, and they do that the best. Yeah. So and and honestly, in a DSP game, I just don't think Amazon and Apple count in all most like <laughs> they don't care to count. Right, they don't care to count. Now, it's not that they aren't viable sources to get like plenty of streams and audience, of course, all that, but yeah. The discovery? You know? Yeah, like they're <laughs> they're not in that same game that Spotify has, has done. So that's why I say, all right, TikTok killed them in that. They're trying to get back to it. And I think what they realized also is the listenership is such a passive experience with the app. All right, you go in, you play your music, you're not, you can be using Spotify for three hours and never look at the shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas, and that's tough for advertising, yeah. which probably is part of another reason that they would like to have more advertising dollars. Let's get people looking at the app. Let's do these clips so people can actually look at the app. <laughs> Cause ain't nobody really looking at Spotify yeah. like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when you can capture more eyeballs in that way, I think it's, it's probably gonna be a benefit to them as a company, but then it'll be a benefit to the artist in its own way. Um, that figure it out because now I can engage with, with you in more ways and cons- you know consume you as a visual and audio experience. But still, the DJ aspect of it again, I just don't think I I don't trust I don't trust them to be great at it from a artist music executive standpoint. What I, I trust them to be great at it for a happy consumer standpoint, right? But like for me to be a, a new artist and trying to get my stuff seen, 
outside of using this other feature, which we'll get to. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You know, I, you, you, there's only a, a limited amount of shelf space. Yeah. I know, although we, so, and that's, that's the, the weird thing about this. So we acknowledge the advent of the internet created this unlimited shelf space, right? Before you go to the store, hey, it's only enough space, like a certain amount of space that you can put your CDs on. There's only enough space for that you can put your Coca-Cola and Pepsi in, and it's hard to bring a new product in there because literally physically there's only another uh, certain amount of space. I get that the internet makes things better and Spotify um, to that credit has more space for more artists. But then realistically shelf space is limited by time and people's attention in a given amount of time. Yeah. All right. So Yes, I can have unlimited amount of artists on this platform, but can I truly equally distribute this music through this AI DJ in a way that's even? What's the even incentive to be even and fair to quote, quote unquote fair to everybody? Yeah. It, ain't, it doesn't even make sense, right? So you're still going to have some level of prioritization towards the people that it makes the most sense. You know what I mean? You know, those are the labels and distributors and the indies, but not so indies. And then you get down to the pure indies so that's one like i don't really trust it to be a huge benefit for artists unless they happen to get in then the other side maybe one incentive would be this feature the spotify discovery yeah. feature well i could but even just really quick on the dj thing i, I just kind of thought about it i think that dj features may be meant to control the vibe around the discovery Cause like I said, like what I was thinking was like, okay, it doesn't make sense that they feel like they would need the DJ tool to introduce artists to people because they have uh they have Discover Weekly, right? Discover Weekly is essentially the like an optimized way of doing it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Cause yeah, exactly. Like Discover Weekly is kind of like, hey, we're looking at like your broader music taste, I guess, and recommending you so versus the DJ feature sounds like, hey, we're recommending you songs based on like the mood you're seeing to be in right now. You know what I'm saying? So like we can't. Versus like Discover Weekly doesn't necessarily have like, there's not like a theme like vibe to your Discover. Just like a bunch of new music I think you would like versus like, this is going to be like, hey, you are listening to, you know, Lil Baby and Lil Dirk right now. Clearly you in the mood for some lit music. So I'm going to start recommending you other artists that make this type of music, right? So it's a little bit more, I guess, cohesive in your know, musical mood for the moment. That's, I just thought about that. Like, that's the only thing I could think of, of like, why? Well, how that could maybe be beneficial to artists is like it's gonna make the experience in which they get discovered in a little bit more positive, you know. But then that, yeah, less yeah. random. Yeah, so, but it's like I, I don't know how impactful that's gonna be. So maybe it might right. take away some of those skips. Yeah, it's like when you finish your playlist and go to some no other random thing and you skip it because like it's not your vibe, even yeah. though you would have liked it in a better experience. Yeah, exactly. To that, I say, well, this is some Apple shit. <laughs> you know, when they release a feature like yeah. five years later, if <laughs> Android Ben had that shit, like this is. Well, Pandora's been doing radio the right way. Right? <laughs> it's not that much to this. But again, you equate that and relate that to the discovery engine. Mm -hmm. What is it? What is discovery this? mode? Yeah, discovery mode. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, that's the real kicker. That's the real kicker. So breaking down the discovery mode, what's the percentage again? I think it's 30%. They take 20 or 30. They take 20 or 30. 30% uh, cut mm -hmm. from your track. And then you get incentivized placement on the platform mm -hmm. through the algorithm. Through the algorithm, how powerful would that have been without having this radio, this DJ AI? I think that's part of why them being they're being launched at the same time. Oh, uh, because they can they can disguise it through that shit. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about that. That's a good point. Yeah, I think about that. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> and that's only the that's the better way to probably even introduce it. Otherwise, would you just hop on some playlist? Yeah, I mean, they basically just keep throwing me like Discover Weekly in the yeah. radio. Well, in the the regular radio. So, yeah, yeah I wonder if the DJ thing is going to replace the, the regular yeah, radio thing. It would have to. Yeah. Radio, radio, as I like to repeat, is trash. <laughs> <laughs> so, it has to be a better way of doing it. Like, they they themselves, they call it a combination of Discover Weekly and, um, and Wrapped. That oh, okay. rest. Yeah. I, I just don't quite get the wrapped analogy personally yet. I guess it's maybe the personalized yeah. aspect of it, but that's how Spotify describes it. All right. So, yeah, that was for another episode. We're going to do a full deep dive and let you guys know the implications and how you can use the Spotify 
features on top of touching on a couple of hot debates, but transitioning to. Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. One of the lesser DSPs. Title just made a change and it's pretty disappointing. Mm -hmm. All right. And it's why it's getting even harder to make money from music streams alone. So what Title just did was they dropped direct artist payouts after they pay new artists even less. Sounds like two wrongs. Yeah. All right. Two wrongs too many. Two wrongs too many. I think it's very clear two wrongs don't make a right right here because it just feels more wrong. They paid less money than they were paying before and that was part of the clout that they were trying to build on the beginning. We're paying artists more money and we have higher quality audio. We're for the artists in comparison, which was a joke in the beginning to feel like, oh, you know, you're paying me pennies and I'm paying you two pennies like that was never <laughs> that great of a of a value proposition but also dropping um direct payout so let's read this officially title is ending a much watched test designed to spread streaming payments more equitably after it resulted in smaller payments to emerging artists it's very interesting we tried to be more equal and it actually paid less to emerging artists mm -hmm. in january Universal Music Group partner with Tidal to develop a new economic model for music streaming that might be better in a rewarding the value provided by artists. Tidal tells Hypebot that the two announcements are separate, but it's hard not to see how this week's shift will not inform the streamers work with UMG. Now, let's go a little further into this. Tidal's payouts total $500,000 to 70,000 uh, $70, artists. Five hundred thousand dollars to seventy thousand artists. So, uh, average of seven fourteen per artist. Is title that small? Yeah, bro. Title small, bro. Yeah. I, I mean, I know. Yeah. But like, when you see it like that, it's just like, dang, that's not that much money. You know what I mean? Spotify, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but title says, it, all right, so seventy thousand dollars enrolled in the direct artist payment program but title says it only paid out five hundred thousand or an average of seven dollars and 14 cents for artists far short of its goal wondering what his goal was the dap program focused on and only a listener number one artist what the dap program focused only on a listener's number one artist which left much much less room for emerging artists to get paid Ah, uh, i see what was going on here our Hi-Fi Plus tier still pay, uh, pays artists more than others. So it sounds like if I'm only, they probably pay a higher amount for the more equal, I mean, for your number one artist, but if your number one artist is an already paid artist, a major artist, what does that really change? Yeah, and most people's, most people's number one artist is going to be a pretty major artist. Yep. All right. Even if you think, oh, I'm an indie person, I like yeah, but it's just gonna be like a major indie person. Yeah, like, a major indie, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like not somebody who's trying to come up. So five million dollars for Title Rising. Title Rising offers direct support to select emerging artists, and as a streamer pivots from direct artist payouts, that commitment expands to five million dollars. Let's get into this tweet because he he seems to be standing for the platform, but I don't really see how this plays out. Like you can expect to see more high impact activations like our recent title rising times Atlanta. Was that the show? That was the title. Yeah. So they're doing more shows. Yeah. yeah. They're doing more shows for artists. So they try to prop things up billboards, documentaries, TV coverage, and opportunities to play for and connect with live 
connect live with their biggest fans. So titles investing more in the live fan culture. Yeah. I, saying, I think I'm in this trailer somewhere. It's pretty funny. I'm in, yeah. that, I'm in that somewhere in the crowd footage. Um, but yeah, like that was that was my first time seeing them get into it was with this event. I'm in there somewhere. I don't see me. I'm over there. I, I think I'm I'm like this way somewhere. So you know, but I know I'm in there. There's a, there's a scene where like we're marching, and I think like you can see me clearly on there. But yeah, like but like that event was pretty cool. You know, like it was very culturally aware in terms of like the artists they picked um, for the scene had a nice turnout. You know, they had they, they had all the bells and whistles. Um, and so, you know, none of the other DSPs really really do that. I know Spotify's done it like a couple of times, but like, they haven't going like crazy in that direction. I don't think Apple's ever done anything like that. I don't think Amazon has ever done anything like that. So, you know, the the the, the space is there for Tyler to be a bit more like culturally impactful, which to me, I think they are trying to do to make up for the, the decrease in payoffs, right? Or the change in the model. Like, hey, we want to show you that like, we ain't completely forgot about you, mm-hmm. you guys. Um, but then even to your point, right? Like all of those artists on that are essentially like rising artists. Like the bigger one that bill was Tom, Tom the Mailman. Second biggest was Suave. The girl four four Sakura, she's a very small artist. Like she got last I said, she got maybe less than a thousand months of listeners. So I don't, I don't know. But she was there, right? So they're trying to show you like, hey, we understand different levels of artists coming out coming out of the city. So I like I said, I think they're doing the build to some goodwill because this was coming out. Because that was that happened a while ago. In fact, yeah. like that was a couple months ago. So I think it was like, hey, let's go ahead and get ahead of this before this shit come out because you know, once it hit, they're gonna be like, Oh, you guys, so you guys aren't for the artists. No, of course we are. Look at this dope event we just put in Atlanta. It was free. The alcohol was free. I was giving out merch. I got a beanie for free. You know what I'm saying? That was pretty cool. It was a nice beanie. Not are we going to do it. We're already doing it. Yeah. And just like good advertising, we can show you footage of it being done. It doesn't just look like it's dope. Yeah. Doesn't this look fun? Yeah. Now that, I can see that. And I think it's a part of a platform like Tidal. I wouldn't expect them to have major innovations just because they're such a small player in comparison to Spotify. So they would have to probably have to try to innovate in these other areas in yeah. support. Yeah. I don't know what that's going to do for the platform as a whole. You know, um, that's interesting because as much as you invest in fans, I'm um, an artist as their platform to go to artists, immediate incentive is always going to be to go to the platform that has the most people on it. Mm-hmm. Cause I can experience the biggest uptick, which speaks to why I said earlier, it might've been the last episode, I don't fully fault Spotify for paying attention to fans first, the consumer, because once you got the consumer, everybody else is going to come. Yeah. All right. If I just brought the artist, that's a whole nother like game to play. And then you got to count on the artists to bring people over and all artists aren't good at marketing and bringing people over onto the platform. So it's the right move to have the audience there. So then the artists and the record labels can leverage it. And Tidal, at this point, feels like they're having to go the other way just because they know they're not going to be able to catch any ground. Yeah. It's like Lyft. All right. Second up to Uber. Uber. They're Uber. All right. Lyft. They're like, oh, yeah, we're friendly. We treat people better. We pay the drivers better. Like they try to come with that language. Uber, they're like, eh, we Uber. (laughs) They already know what it is. We're way bigger. (laughs) That simple, right? You don't really see Uber trying to combat that outside of the stuff like that became like violating and we have to improve because people are trying to sue us Mm -hmm. or it becomes a super bad rap. So that's kind of where title comes from in me. But impact, I don't quite know. That's why I don't I personally don't like champion or speak out on titles. Not because I'm not for some of the stuff they talk about, but I just don't see any real impact that it's going to be able to create. Yeah, I think I think this is just them digging themselves out. Out of the hole. Because, you know, like you said, like, they're not a big DSP. So it's not like they're making crazy amounts of money. Well, actually, even they were a big DSP, we see with Spotify that just being a big, big DSP doesn't make you profitable. You know what I'm saying? So imagine what Spotify is going through, they're going through. Imagine what Tidal's going through, right? We pay out more per royalties. We're, you know, the only platform, or not, not like I think Spotify does it now, but, you know, we're one of the only platforms that offers like high five streaming. So imagine the cost of the bandwidth and the storage space for the music and shit, right? So I think it's like they created the perfect like dream platform, right? Hey, we're gonna be offer you the ability to give 
high quality listening experiences to your friend, your fans for the same price. Well, not the same as y'all pay for it. Well, at first it was one price and then it went into the split between the high five and the regular, you know what I'm saying? Um, but so we're going to give you that option. We're going to pay you more money, right? And they've been riding that wave for the last couple of years. And then I just feel like they woke up one day and was like, bro, we're in the red. We can't keep doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so either we can remove the high quality thing to save some money, but it's like, can't do that because that's your, that's your whole selling point right there, right? Is that we are higher quality listening experience. So then what's the next thing we are, we are, we can do? Let's cut these motherfucking royalty payments, you know what I'm saying? Make this shit something that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. And then like you said, let's focus on other areas of value that we could bring to the artist community to kind of like make up for it. Um, Cause I mean, even like, I think somebody said it on one of the tweets, like, yeah, they dropped their royalty payout, but I think it's still higher than a lot of other DSPs, you know, which is crazy to think about, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, we lowered it and still are better than some people, you know what I'm saying? Um, but that's what I think, but I think they literally just like, dug them, saw themselves into a very like idealistic hole and it just took them the last like four or five years ago like oh no nah, like we we shouldn't have did that we shouldn't have came out the gate so hot you yeah. know what i'm saying with, with this whole artist friendly narrative we should have maybe yeah. built into that narrative but then you could argue if they didn't do that would they even be like we yeah. still care about it's it their value proposition yeah man. exactly yeah so they had to find something rocking hard plays man hey <laughs> hey and by the way i lied we are talking about this episode Spotify discovery mode, a scam or a blessing. Here we are. Let's do it. So Spotify discovery rule, as we said, if y'all don't know, they're taking 30% of your royalties. For that one song. For that one song. Yeah. All right. If you want to use their discovery um, mode for a more favorable positioning within the app. Some people like this. Some people don't. Some people are calling this payola. That's music, man. I don't disagree. Yeah, I don't disagree with I don't think it matters <laughs> at the same time because it is what it is. It's always going to exist, right, in its own form of fashion. You can never expect someone to spend money and time building a platform and allow you to get whatever real estate on that platform that you want. For free. That doesn't make sense. You wouldn't do that either. So anybody on this payola stuff or or why do I have to work so hard? Just get over that. Like it's always gonna exist. You would not advise your your uh, your sister, your brother, your friend, yourself to build a big Instagram page and then allow everybody to post what they want and talk about whatever without them getting paid for it. Yeah. You wouldn't tell them to build a big old platform and then allow people to advertise on it without getting paid for it. So it doesn't make sense. Now, with that being said, this specific way of doing it, are you for it, Jacor? Yeah, I fought with it. I'm here. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm a debate against it. Okay. But I'm also for it. Because <laughs> I, mean, I got some other points to make at some point. But let's just uh, speak about the main con. All right. Royalties received in discovery mode are 30% less than the standard Spotify royalty split. Mm -hmm. All right. I hear that. But why are you for it with that being a con? I'm going to I'm gonna make less money, bro. You're going to make less money on that one song. Okay. So if... If the one song is all you have and all you have to invest in, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, I can get that, you know, but I'm assuming that most of these artists, especially the ones that even qualify to use it, probably have a catalog built, right? And hopefully. You're like, okay, yeah, let's say that. Hopefully. Hopefully you have a catalog built. Um, and what, what comes from good marketing and having a catalog is that Ideally, everything grows as people discover you through whatever initial thing they like you from, right? So you might be losing, let's say you you run discovery mode on one song and it makes $10,000 in royalties, but you only make $7,000. You're losing 30%, right? So you're losing 3K. But the people trickle over to the rest of your catalog and off of that, you make another 15K. Give them the anecdote, man. Give them the to give them the anecdote. The anecdote, yeah, you, you mean, don't act like we don't know people who have done it. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. You're right. Real information. Yeah, yeah. So, so what it first put me on to was, so a lot of people are just learning about Discovery Mode now. Mm -hmm. We've known about Discovery Mode for at least the last six or seven months. We were trying hard to get this shit before everybody else could get it. We, we, we went through some roadblocks, you know what I'm saying? But we learned a lot in the process. And what first put me on to it was a, a good friend of mine hit me one day. It was like, hey, have you heard this Discovery Mode thing that Spotify is doing? I was like, no. He's like, well, I have a manager friend. He did it for one of his artists. 
Um, they ran on one song. It was like their artist maybe made like 40K where he should have made like 70, 80, whatever the math on that 30% comes out to, right? So he lost the money, he only made 40K. But my friend was like, but the people streaming over to going up to the rest of his catalog boosted like his pay by maybe like an extra like 60K. So he lost the 30, 40K on that song in particular, but he made an extra 60K overall. And so my friend was like, no, this shit is worth it. He's like, this shit is fucking crazy, bro. Like, all I have to do is give up 30% of one song to possibly grow the rest of my catalog. Easy. You know what I'm saying? Like easy, easy. Because if you break it down in the grand scheme of what he made, it's probably really like, eight percent of everything or something crazy like like five eight percent of everything you know what I'm saying if you look at it that way so that's how i look at it man is like to me the song that you choose for discovery mode is just your sacrificial lamb to a better life you know what i'm saying <laughs> and if the rest of your catalog is good then you're gonna you're gonna see that money come back right you're gonna see it come back a, a couple x's fold if your music isn't good and this one song is just the song they even probably won't, you know what I'm saying? But then you can also make the argument of like, what's the cost of of entry point into the game, right? If this 30%, if because if you're an artist that doesn't have a crazy catalog, and like I said, you're only looking at um, discovery mode to to kind of be the way out for you, then I mean, you got bigger issues to worry about anyway. You know, like there, there are other things in your career that have to kind of be figured out. Um, so that's that's why I go for it, man. Cause it's like, what's giving up one song to grow the rest of your account? Not even the whole song, bro. Cause there are people who will go to a label or a digital company and sign over a hundred percent of the song royalty to get, you know what I'm saying, to get exposure in certain areas. So what's giving up thirty percent on one song? You know what I'm saying? And it's not like discovery mode is like permanent. You can cut it off at some point. So it's only it's only during the time that you have it running. So once you're done, you buy the regular royalties. You know what I'm saying? At least from at least from how I understand it. I don't know. If that's how I understand it to be. So it's like, what's, what is the difference between you paying a marketing agency 20 to 30% of your marketing spend to pop this shit off versus Spotify taking 30%? The only difference is the marketing company want their money up front. Spotify wouldn't wait until this shit start generating some income and take their money back. Hey, man. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I really tried. It's hard for me to argue against it. <laughs> it just doesn't. It. I know that people have their arguments. It doesn't make sense to poo poo on on this <laughs> this feature because not only is it the fact that you get the money from the 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 catalog, not only are is it really just a marketing expense. Mm -hmm. Look at it that way. Mm -hmm. Don't you not have to pay? For the streams on the other platforms? What you mean? If I have this song out on Apple, like, don't I only pay for the streams specific to Spotify? Like, don't they take it out? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if people were like, like, if, are you saying, like, if somebody discovered it on that, but then went and played it on, like, Tyler or something? Like, yeah, yeah no, nah, yeah, they're not touching it. They don't know. I don't think they know. How would they know that, you know? Like, so there's, there's so many benefits to this. I think the, the downside, if you want to look at it that way, is the accessibility to it. We know that it was only accessible to a certain um, group of people at first. Always going to happen, right? Then you start to test with more people. It's more accessible to more people at this moment. Are they ever going to allow every single artist? Hell no. That doesn't <laughs> seem like that makes sense. Too much evil. Too much. Yeah, too much. And every song isn't even available. All right, so what it say you can't have the song has to have been on the platform for at least 30 days mm -hmm. also it has to have been in radio for the last seven days that oh. radio feature oh so that's already been on algorithmically well, algorithmically well to get further boost it so it's a good way to keep a lot of motherfuckers out there shit. right yeah right so it's like yes we we have to know that the song is liked because they have to a and r it yeah. Am I going to listen to every single song and say this song is good or not and trust my judgment? Mm, that's tough. All right. Because maybe my judgment isn't perfect. So it's great that I'm leaning on what's happening on the platform. Two, I get to avoid people saying, oh, I'm being selective. Mm -hmm. Like, man, we just kind of, we just going off of what's working, man. We help amplify people that way. So I think part of what we've seen where you say that we saw on some of our clients' dashboard, they had the button there but they couldn't use it yeah it might be because there's no song specifically eligible because they have to go through those hoops that's been there yeah, probably exactly why you yeah. think about that yeah. yeah okay so it's a feature it's coming 
it's well, coming. Fair. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Fair. <laughs> and I think it's gonna be beautiful. I think it's gonna add. It's gonna be very beneficial for some artists. I think the downside is always gonna be from some artists' perspective. Again, is are they having access to that or not? But in terms of a regular pro- value proposition, if you're my artist, you tell me that somebody says they're going to take 30% of the streams only on one platform and we still have a part of the rest of the catalog and they're going to push it like basically I don't want to say guarantee but like they're basically they are this is the plug you know like usually the plug is the person to the but like that is plugging you in to the source yeah but when the source becomes the plug it don't get that much yeah, bro. Like, that's what I'm saying, bro. Spotify, like I was saying earlier, but they're fighting hard to be looked at as, as a marketing platform, man. I'm I'm here for it. Like, like I said, I we I think we've always thought of them like that, but they now have tools to really make that viable. It was like I, I think they tried to fight it before to avoid payola accusations in an era where payola was more important. That's another thing. I don't know if we talked about this on the episode. Probably not. It's not super out there like that. Say everybody haven't heard every every episode. Yeah. This might be their first. Yeah, man. But um, you know, we we got word from a little birdie not too long ago that Spotify is trying to de-emphasize their editorial playlist. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Remember, yeah. No, we we yeah. we, we heard the the rumors. That reminds me of yeah, other conversations yeah. this category. So hmm. Hmm. So that's what I'm saying, like this is hmm. Like they're doing that, and I was like, because man was like, hey, w- there was a point in time where we had every artist on the planet fighting to be on the top editorial playlist. When some shit like this come out, that shit's gonna switch. Fuck a fuck a editorial, bro. I want this discovery mode shit. You know what I'm saying? That's how I, that's how I feel. Then with clients though, I mean, you can get most necessary, whatever. Great, you can talk to your distributor and get you access to this discovery mode shit. That would be so much better. You know what I'm saying? So so much better because the. The listeners are, um, from what I've seen with the clients who've been able to use it, like way more active. Because we've had, I mean, that's another thing. Yeah. Let me read this stat before you move on. Talk about more active. They say users save discovery mode songs fifty percent more often. Add them to playlists forty four percent more often, and follow artists thirty seven percent more often. Yeah. All right. But we've we seen it firsthand, man. We had one the the first time we got to see it like internally. We had a client we were doing a campaign with um, end of last year into the top of this year. So I think we did a December campaign, came back into the January campaign. And he's just been like kind of taking the break since doing his thing. But I remember right at the end of the December campaign, he had told us, like, hey, like my distribution company just green me for Discovery Mode. I'm about to try it out. And bro, when we started his campaign, I think he was maybe at like 400,000 monthly listeners. Um, at the end of that first month, he was at maybe like 610,000 when they activated. Bro, I watched him go from 600,000 month listeners to like 1.1 million, like the next like three, three, four weeks. You know what I'm saying? Just off of, because they, they started it a week before the campaign ended. So, I mean, we was only contributing to that for like a week, you know what I'm saying, of that. And then everything after that point was just organic and in, in discovery mode. And so I'm watching his shit go, I'm like, bro, just like it said, saves going up like crazier, you know what I'm saying? Followers going up, all this shit is like shooting up. And I'm like, man, that shit really, that shit really hit, you know what I'm saying? Um, so that's why I go back to it, it's like, bro, what's 30%? What's 30% of one song, like you said, on one platform, when you gonna get all of this? <laughs> Cause in the right scenario, you would have paid for that. You know, if somebody told you like, if a marketer came to you and was like, hey, you know what I'm saying, for, I don't know, for three bands, I'll make X, Y, and Z happen. You're gonna make 10 bands back. What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's commission, sales commission. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Sales commission. We want to find your your ideal prospect. So, you know, we need that, we need that commission check. <laughs> yeah. Which is beautiful because the money never has to come out your pocket in that way. All right. I I only get paid if you get paid, great. So I gotta go back to this topic you brought up that I did forget about them deprioritizing playlists. Right. Now let's go ahead and say partially how we know about it. One, we've seen them do it in terms of the features they focus on. Yep. Two, they done laid a bunch of editorial playlist curators off. Yep. All right. Laid them off. The focus is truly not there. Now, I think editorial playlisters were a great manual way 
for them to probably learn some things. Mm -hmm. And now we're implementing that through the AI because all the clout and all the desire people had to be a part of editorial playlists, they weren't really as impactful as most people thought. Like by and large, most of them there were not that impactful. It was nice to have because it's something that was free. You technically didn't pay. You, like if you knew you had some relationships, so it's cool. Like why would I not take these free hundred thousand streams or thirty three thousand streams or a million streams depending on the playlist and the genre, et cetera? So it was never something that I was anti because it was like, hey, I'm not paying for it, so why not get that? But it wasn't all as effective as people dreamed and fantasized about this has the potential to be more effective and i feel like the spotify discovery mode and focus on the radio dj all these ei i'm an ai type of features shows yeah we're gonna continuously lean on our algorithm and improving that in its ability to help people discover and on the other side if you think about taking the humans out of it which typically we don't like oh that's a threat to artists but on that side it actually even is the playing field even more more. Because today, although the playlisting relationship isn't something that you pay for, there's always this unsaid idea of, well, this person has built all of these relationships because they've been in the industry. They can afford to be in a place to meet these people or they're connected to this group of people. So now they're in these relationships. That's always existed. Now, those people become less valuable on that side of things. Like, one of the homies. Yeah, you mentioned he just lost his playlist plug. Oh, yeah. Right? He wasn't even somebody that that's unfortunate because he's not even like he's a super industry person who has all these people. Right. But you just use him as a case study. He has an end that other people doesn't, that don't have into Spotify. He just lost his playlist plug. Now, oh shit. But what's the difference between me and somebody else? Outside of the other intangibles, yeah. but specifically, like, that's that would that relationship with them, yeah, was right. It was different, yeah. Exactly. So, like, it's a positive for artists who are not just for equality in terms of, hey, I wanted to have as many resources, but also, you know, from a little bit of a hating perspective, like, <laughs> like man, y'all got all that. I'm glad you lost that shit. Right. Because there's a lot of people that are now like, what am I going to do? Or they're trying or they see this coming and they're still trying to figure out, like, all right, how can I make this shake before my playlister is gone? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I, I definitely see it as the great equalizer because the, the rules for everything else are much more clear than the rules for making editorial. Like, all they tell you to make editorial is like, is it have the relationship? Whereas even that stopped mattering once they start kind of having that whole like pitch thing and artists of Spotify, right? So even the relationship matter a little bit less. Um, and then have the song be big enough that we care to put it on here, which that is so arbitrary. You know what I'm saying? Like that could that could be you know, your ten thousand stream song could qualify for this thousand follower editorial playlist, but like that shit don't even get you nowhere near being a like teardrop or something like yep. that. You know what I'm saying? Um so I think it, it even the playing field because now they have in, in bold, you know, black and white print, this is what you have to do to qualify for this. So now you know that as, as an artist, no matter what level you're at, no matter what, how strong or weak your relationships are, once you qualify for it, you can do it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you can, you can go through it and possibly come out of the other side with the relationships and, and, and something bigger than uh, what you had before. So, yeah, I think it's it's going to end up being a better profit in like long term, man. Because I, to touch on what you said earlier, yeah, like Spotify has been trying to duck the payola rumors for so long. And it's not like that the curators are making it easy for them. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's like, all right, how can we completely remove ourselves from negative, this negative stigma? Cut that shit. You know, we, like I said, we're not going to cut it off completely, but let's de-emphasize it. Let's put more of the power on this algorithmic thing, which, you know, I hate to be that guy, but it is cheaper. Build a, you know, build a program and hire a bunch of curators. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause the program is there. Once it's there, it's there. These curators want jobs and benefits and pensions and vacation time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I can still do the same job to some degree with, with, less people no people you know what i'm saying so as a company i'm also saving myself not only a reputation blow by kind of moving away from this but i'm also saving myself money from a financial standpoint and what people have to remember man when looking at these platform decisions right you have to always go back to the money 
great things get created when motherfuckers ain't making money. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's just the reality of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then things become better once they are making money, right? But like Spotify, we said earlier, Spotify's been in the red for a long time. So they're looking for any little way to kind of like, you know, cut costs while also, um, you know, increase profits. And I think, yeah, they look at like, hey, we have this discovery mode thing where we're going to be able to take 30%. So that's money being generated out the gate for money. We got to pay them anyway. If they, they caught a moment on here. Um, we can de-emphasize this so we can stop the money from going around us, but still being used to take advantage of our platform. And, you know what I'm saying? We're going to lay some motherfuckers up and save some money. You know what I'm saying? Like, just put that money into some other developments that's going to be better for us, ideally. So I, I, I get it from Spotify's standpoint. I'm not even gonna lie. Like honest, I think I think if I was Daniel Eck, I'd probably be making some similar calls. Like, man, it's players and shit fucking us up, but we need to get away from it. You know, um, not completely because that's Spotify's whole thing has always been a playlisting thing. But yeah, but let's move on. And so that to me says that the playlist culture as a whole is probably in trouble because if Spotify's been the premier like playlisting platform, and once they de-emphasize it, and, like two three years go by. Like, are, are fans going to start caring about playlists as much? You know what I'm saying? Or when I, when I care about your curated playlist, when I know I could just go get this, you know, AI configurated one of my own based off of my taste and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying, that I have to go search for and look for it just kind of came to me. Most consumers, when I know, are going to eat that shit up once they have time to, like, really experience it for a bit, right? So yeah. that's why I see it going. I mean, like, Spotify might completely change the whole landscape of playlist and culture because of the discovery mode and, and what they're doing with their own playlist and culture. It's going to be crazy to see. Bro, it's going to be real crazy to see when this happens. Now, with that being said, we got to talk about artists selling their catalogs. Why are all these artists selling their catalogs? The bag. The bag. It must be the money. It must be. Got to be. Well, <laughs> Up Rocks has an article that speaks on it. And I've been watching this and we haven't commented for a while. Of course, we've been having our behind the scenes conversations, but they speak on two reasons. One of them I was aware of. Another one I didn't think of. The first one, I didn't think about this, but I think it's really dope to consider. They said, as the late David Crosby said, when he sold his catalog, I can't work and streaming stole my record money. I have a family and a mortgage and I have to take care of them. So it's my only option. I'm sure others feel the same. Now he's gone and that cash is likely to comfort his family. So he passed away. He had that cash to give his family. It's very similar. Same vein. Country star Travis Tritt said when he sold his catalog to Reservoir Media, the biggest reason for me selling was not to leave a huge headache for my family that would have to try to administrate a catalog. Mm -hmm. I'd rather leave them cash. This is actually the angle that I hadn't even thought of before. We've talked about um, the second angle, but the idea of the headache it is, if that's not your category, your profession to deal with catalog administration, it is a, a job. Yeah. It's a lot of different nuances. Like artists, y'all are dedicated to like to building your career in this. and Y'all always are uh, um, acclimated to the idea of dang, understanding the cut, mechanical royalties, all these different types of royalties, publishing everything the mastering so it's a whole thing to learn yeah and then now you have to have some lawyers and things like that that you hopefully have to trust to administrate everything it could become a thing and i can see how he how he sees it that way then the other thing though which is just straight sad how david crosby said i can't work gets an older age or dealing with um health issues. yeah health issues and streaming stole my record money so i'm not getting that money that i used to and i got bills to pay all right. So this is my only option. He saw it as an only option. That is, this is very interesting to think about the later portion of life and why people are, are selling. I want to get into the second, then we'll kind of like talk about a combine. But the other big reason that stars could be selling their catalogs has to do with taxes because the other way, oh, because of the way income is taxed from royalties, artists might end up keeping more of their money by selling their publishing rights all at once. Royalty payments are viewed by the IRS as regular income, which could be taxed as high as 37% under current tax codes, depending on how much these royalties are. Ah, I am well aware. Man, that tax rate sucks. (laughs) However, a catalog sale is taxed as capital gains, Mm -hmm. which has much lower max rate of 20%. So 20% instead of 37%. And I believe 
this trigger. I don't think it was the same years ago. Either either this just happened, if I remember correctly, or like or maybe it's still implementing in some place. I can't remember what it was, but this tax bill was something that people saw and they saw it coming. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people started selling because this was supposed to happen, if I remember correctly. But there it is, flat out. All right, I get more money by selling it at once, not just because it's a chunk of change, but also I get taxed at a far lower rate. Seventeen percent. Once you start getting to ten million, you know what I mean? Twenty million, hundred million. Well, Justin Bieber sold his for like five hundred million, right? Yeah, some five hundred million. One, two, three. One, two, three. Some ridiculous times. Point one seven. So let's see how much money that was in taxes. That was eighty five million dollars that he saved. You know what I mean? So that's that's a nice little chunk of change. <laughs> that seventeen million adds up. And even when you're dealing with someone who might have been selling a seventy million dollar catalog, what Metro Brubin just sold yep. a seventy million dollar catalog. Let's do that math real quick. Yeah. Like Metro Boomin. This is or one point one million. One point one million. Yep. That extra one point one million is meaningful. Right? I mean, I know he's doing well, but probably not like I don't care about one million dollars yeah, with exactly. Right? <laughs> and then you're talking about the fact that that royalty you're saving that, but they're also getting that's as opposed to getting paid over time. Mm-hmm. All right, it's like it's like that uh that lottery situation. Yeah. All right, you want your money up front or do you want to get paid in increments over time? This is then when you get to the other side of it, where we talk about, well, what are people doing with the money? Because let's just pretend I'm making some numbers up, like kind of like the lottery situation. I'm getting paid $100,000 a year, right? Royalties over time versus just getting $10 million at once. Not only might I have saved money just getting $10 million at once at once because of this tax code. But I can also make bigger and better business moves. Mm-hmm. All right. Because, okay, I got $100,000. It's nice to say I can be paid this over time and I'm going to get to $10 million, even if it was the exact same amount of money that I would get over time. But I can only make certain moves with $100,000 than I could with $5 million, $10 million. Like, Oh, yeah. Okay. I can buy this these apartment units now. Yeah. All right. So my, my, my money might be able to allow me to get better investments which then creates an even higher return than the turn you see the term. I mean, return difference you see at the beginning just by looking at, oh, he got a hundred thousand dollars versus ten million dollars. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing to consider. And pretty much, bro, I, I know you and Zach talked about it this morning. I wasn't saying much, but like the investment thing is a, is a huge part of it. Yeah. Well, actually, I take that back. Yes, the investment part is a huge part of it in terms of like, hey, I could put my money in something different, but also it's just a necessity anyway. Yeah. So because I had a conversation with someone recently and they were like, yeah, man, when, when it's that kind of money, like the plan is a part of it. Like you, you already have something to do with the money. No one's selling their catalog without anything to do with your money because yeah. you can't. You're just going to waste the money. Right. So we talk about the money that you save by because of the tax code and, and just selling your catalog at once. But really, if you look at how things break down and just paying off of your regular taxes, where you lose so much of that money, like just by ending the same year with that on your <laughs> with all your gains on your tax. So we got to spend this money put it in some investment so then that doesn't get taxed too so everybody's gonna end up be put um, put be putting money in real estate for sure yeah like tech is too risky all right They're, i don't know what the taxes and things look like around funds i don't think like if you put it in some type of hedge fund or something i don't think that would protect you i'm not sure so somebody else if y'all know that kind of thing put that in the comments or whatever on here on youtube but like literally no one even if someone wasn't scheming and I specifically saying I want to get into real estate or something like that. Just because of the amount of money you're dealing with, there's nobody selling it without having a plan. Cause literally you just have to, because it's that much money. Yeah, exactly. And the artists that are even getting those type of offers, like know that right there around people that's going to make exactly. That, that was what the first mentioned. They said, they got people that's 
Yeah, bro. Because I noticed that when Future saw his call out, bro. When Future saw his shit, one of the very first things that got reported after that was that he bought a house in Miami and he was thinking about buying another one. And I was like, oh, shit. Future's probably taking this money to get in real estate. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me go. Maybe. Maybe one is for him and the rest is, you know, for real estate shit. That's what I like to think of Future. I like to think of Future's a very financially savvy guy behind the scenes. <laughs> been here for a long time. He's never looked dull or and broke. So I think that he's he's good with his money. He got some good people around him. So, you know, so then now we can kind of watch and see, like, what these other artists do with it. What is Metro going to do? What is Justin Bieber going to do? You know what I'm saying? What are these people that are doing are going to be doing? Um, and so, yeah, I think that's going to be cool um, because we're going to, in real time, watch a lot of these artists kind of turn into, like, super business moguls in other areas off of, like, VC funding, which is going to be interesting to see, like, you know, who does smart things with that money and who doesn't and what that looks like. Um, but I think it's... It makes a lot of sense kind of with the one with the tax point in mind because I never thought about that. But then, you know, to the point, like you said, like, hey, I, if I, I got 20 million, I could take, you know, 2 million a year for 10 years. Yeah, that could be cool. If I had 20 million right now, I could go make this 10 million dollar investment. Now that might make me back 100 million. Right? I think a lot of the artists are seeing it like that because what I've noticed with, you know, at least a lot of the more recent ones that have kind of been talked about is that these artists are doing it. They do it once they hit a certain spike in their career, right? So, like, future, uh, well, Metro Boomin has been coming off the run of his last project, right? Kind of being back out here. Um, future was having like a pretty good run. I think he had, I think he had just like broke a couple of records and got some plaques, like right before he announced. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the catalog thing. So it's like, I think, I mean, yeah. yeah. So I think they're looking at the time and like, hey, let me take this moment, make this money while all these different people are paying attention to me, not just music people, but like all these people, right? Like in all these industries. So I can then take this money, leverage this attention I have right now and go build something off of it. Cause that to me would be the difference between the future selling his catalog and then like David Crosby, right? Like David Crosby was at a point in his career where like, yeah, he's David Crosby, but he's not like, he wasn't like out here like that anymore, right? So maybe, maybe he's not thinking of how I can flip it because I may not even be in positions where, you know, so I, I feel like I have the reach right now to hit those people versus like somebody like Future's probably thinking like, I'm hot, I'm every fucking way. If I want to talk to a motherfucker about getting real estate, a motherfucker gonna come talk to me about getting real estate, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and, and whatever. So I think it could just be the artist looking at like, hey, let me make the best financially sound um, decisions while I'm currently high and can get this type of looks or get these type of opportunities for my catalog, you know? See, I don't know and quite out there like that but I'll say this apparently Bad Bunny sold his catalog for a couple hundred mil I don't even say a, couple, he, a, a number in the hundred mils because it's not a couple hundred mil mm -hmm. and and uh, JR actually speaks on this in our in our course but one of our conversations we had saying this to be true Bad Bunny fits the bill on the investor and artist side of what you just said, Bad Bunny, one, I'm still popping. I can keep getting money. Mm -hmm. And like, let's be real. If well, the number to be that high as early as he's been popping is crazy. Yeah. Like that's amazing for him. You know what I'm saying? But two, as an investor, you're projecting this number to be even more mm -hmm. because the trend that he's on. So they're there. So for him, he's probably getting more value quote unquote then it's worth in the, in the short term because he hasn't hit that peak yet and the investors are you know they're betting on the ship mm -hmm. crazy number I think the multiple is like 30 something X which is like a crazy multiple but there's that so you have people who are in those situations but unfortunately on the other side we have people where there's a lot of artists that we think have money and those artists are living off of the deals they're making like oh the record deals so you got advances that you're living off of mm -hmm. we've had some conversations with some executives who were like ah this artist kind of broke actually mm -hmm. we won't believe that you <laughs> believe it because their names that everybody like knows and would think is rich um uh, but you forget kanye was broke mm -hmm. nobody just believed it because he's kanye and he told people he was broke yeah. you know what i mean like people would think it's a hating thing but like kanye said i'm broke Mark Zuckerberg lo loan me some money. Yeah. Like, and y'all think it was a joke. It's like, but the broke just looks different because you're working with so much money. Yeah. Like a person spending 300 million a year or whatever, or like living a certain lifestyle, 
but yet we already know if your expenses exceed your income, then it just is what it is. All right. So like when you look at somebody like Kanye spending money on ideas and and outside of just lifestyle, just let's just call it your art, investing in, in your art. And he does heavily, then yes, you can still be broke. So there's some of these artists who could be in these positions where, hey, let me go ahead and get this money to cash in and try to correct some of the life that I'm living. Yeah, because that's also why it not might not be worth it, quote unquote, for them to just play the long game. Because why are investors doing this? Because they know they're going to be able to get more money on the other end. Yep. Like at this level, you don't see this many high level investors investing in something if they don't believe the numbers are going to grow. Yeah. Right? This isn't like a crypto hype trend where you got all these regular cons- consumers just hopping in, like, "Ooh, I can get rich now." Now, these are rich people <laughs> investing in uh, making rich investments in shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, we already know the numbers are going to grow. I could pull up the Goldman Sachs doc to, like, quote the numbers specifically of what they're supposedly going to grow to. Let's see if, if I have, still have it up. Nah. Yeah, I'll find it. But. I think they said it's going to grow to like 55 million or something like that in, in 2030 based on us. And we're somewhere lower right now. Now, why would I, if I'm already rich as hell, make a short term investment like this? So we talk, we can say, oh yeah, taxes. Eh, wow. Well, you know, so I just want to make sure I can get as much money as I can here. We can say, my family, like that part makes sense, right? My family, I'm about to pass away. I don't want to deal with that, right? But if I'm already rich, like rich, rich, why would I not just keep doing what I'm doing and then wait for me to maximize even more on the investment? Like I can't see Jay-Z selling his shit off, all right? Now, especially, probably not selling it off at all, but especially now, Yeah. all right? But if you're in a tighter position, it's like, ah, let me sell this off. Now, I can't wait for the long term. I remember we talked about that time where I was like, hey, there's some points in your life where even if you know you could get more for a long term decision, you just had a place in life where you're like, hey, man, I got to make this short term decision because this not having 400 right now is actually going to be more impactful to my life than it would be to have 10,000 later. Yeah, I might not even make it to the point. <laughs> exactly. I might not make it there. Yeah. Right. So who knows what kind of position some of these people are in? Like, so we can we can make it about the taxes and uh, some of the other things to make it seem like a smart business move. But some of them probably are just living tight too, right? So it's it's, it's an interesting thing, and it sucks that some artists will even be in this position. Here's the numbers from Golden Sachs. So they put it as a peak when it, we were heavy on physical in 2000, and then. Now we are in a space where, where are we? 2023, 20, 24? Yeah, so we're probably somewhere sitting around $20 billion. Just now, equating the same amount of money that we were doing in tw- 2000. Mm-hmm. And then if we project out to 2030, that number is going to be $35 billion moving into $40 billion. Mm-hmm. So that means there's a lot of growth to go. We're talking about additional twenty billion ish, yeah, give or take. With that being said, I gotta cite this. Uh, shout out to Circa. He said that um, if you adjust for inflation, we're still not even where we were back in two thousand. So even the numbers might be the same, but we're actually oh, lower, yeah. right? Yeah. And even in twenty thirty, when we continue to grow and we're at a certain point, then you know apparently that still wouldn't equal the peak of what we were. Right. But for an investor, that shit doesn't matter. Yeah. Because if I'm getting in today, I'm only worried about the growth from today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But for the artists and the industry as a whole, yeah, that is like a reality uh, where it's like, okay, we still aren't killing it like what we were before. Streaming still isn't a perfect solution. But when we project out what seven years from now, more people actually adopting streaming as a platform and a way of consuming music. Is going to grow, which is going to equate to better um, return. Well, I don't want to say better f- returns for every artist individually, but as an industry 
whole, there's going to be more money that comes from streaming. Yeah, yeah, facts. Uh, so, you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess every it's always it's a personal, unique s- scenario from artist to artist. Some of them probably have you know, great business moves up out of it. Some of them might need the money and also make some great moves <laughs> out of it. Hopefully, more of that. You know, definitely. Well, hopefully, more than that. Or maybe hopefully more of the first that don't need it but got the good business moves. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure, for sure. For sure. <laughs> and then, of course, then you got uh, some scenarios, money or not, it just don't make sense to like hold on to it because streaming's not paying enough. So might as well, like for my family who aren't specialists in this area to just take a lump sum and then make smart decisions that way. Yeah. So, you know, to each his own, it's a really interesting conversation and we'll continue to see more of this, but just to switch it up a little bit, it takes money to make money. Should you get a job as an artist? Yes. 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 Straight up. That's it. No, whatever type of job. I support all the jobs, man. The legitimate, the illegitimate. I'm sorry. But really is illegitimate in today's age. Scamming. Scamming. Yeah, remember, you remember 2016 when all the popping SoundCloud rappers were scammers? That was the era, man. But you know why they was popping? They had money. They had jobs. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm not going to even, get, I'm not gonna even <laughs> go down to illegitimate, illegitimate wormhole because I'll... I'll flip some seemingly legitimate shit to in- illegitimate <laughs> when I when I break it down. But do they need a job? Yes. I don't, there's a lot of artists that are like, I don't know. I just want to focus on my music full time. How can you get this shit seen? How can you pay for the producers outside of scamming the producers and finessing them and not paying them? It's just not cool. Yeah, that's not cool. It's not cool. Right. How can you get to a certain point? I don't understand why some artists don't think they need a job. Like, okay. It's because they want to be seen as serious artists before they are, which, you know, we talk a lot about, bro. This shit is about perception. Um, and I'm not stupid. If I'm looking at your Spotify monthly listeners, you got 12,000 monthly listeners and your biggest song got a 100K streams, and you trying to sell me this dream on the other end that you this big artist without a job, I was like, I'm not, I'm not crazy, bro. Either you scamming, you got a day job, or you lying. Yeah. Right? But, but so I think it's that they think, about that, right? Like, oh, fans won't like me if I had a job. To me, well, not to me, but one of my favorite things that happened in the last couple of years was when the rapper Tierra Whack posted a, a photo of her clocking up her job. I don't know if you caught that. You don't have that. Yeah, she had posted this photo on her Instagram of her like clocking into work. And this was probably when she was a good like year or so into like her come up. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's at this point, like, she's starting to be more industry known. And like everybody just lost their shit. They said, "Damn, like Tierra Wax still has a job. Like at this point, she's probably doing like maybe, maybe right at a million plus monthly listeners." You know what I'm saying? Like you know, she was up, and I was like, "Man, I'm so glad somebody finally did this because like this is a lot more realistic." You know, and like so we learned it. I think through the, the marketing stuff, but like we would talk to clients sometimes that like on paper would be lit, yeah. and then they'd be like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna hit you back when I get when I come from my job." Like you're like job, bro. You gotta. You got a million monthly listens. Like they're like, yeah, but you know, that's only making me, you know, six k a month. And, you know, that plus my job, I'm making fifteen k a month. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so I'm down to do both. And I'm like, that makes a lot of, a lot of fucking sense, right? This is one of your seven streams of revenue. You know what I'm saying? That you build it towards your your wealth. So, oh yeah, man, so I'm with it, man. I think like artists need to depend on the type of artist you are. Um, it won't hurt you, you know, because I put. A, Ashton is there because rappers, I don't know, man. So depending on the type of rap you made, that shit might hurt you. Like, motherfuckers, you gotta, <laughs> let them know you got a job. I ain't gonna lie. But almost every other genre, like, fans... respect it. Yeah, fans respect it. They get it, but They're like, hey, we know you're a human being. We know that this shit costs money. We know you gotta survive. We know that, you know, we we keep hearing that the music industry don't pay y'all a lot. So, you know, we get it that you got a job. We're not gonna knock you for it. Just make some shit that I like and spend that money in a way that appeases, appeases me as a fan, and I don't care. And if you got a job and you spending it on bullshit that don't benefit me as a fan, yeah, yeah, I don't care. But if you are, you know, using it to invest in yourself, then like nobody's ever gonna knock you for that. Nobody that that wants that means well for you will ever knock you for that. Nah, bro. Now it's ironic because just last night I was talking to somebody in my family, and they were like, they knew somebody in the music industry who worked, you know, they had a regular job, but the person seemed to be popping. And, I, and this is his strategy. It's probably back in like, oh, nine, oh, 10. This guy was working at hotels, 
not at hotels, casinos and government jobs. Those are his two things. Okay. And he says specifically because he won't have to worry about seeing a body in the industry. Yeah. <laughs> Where you was in work. You know, you got those people who will be a, a barista, bartender, and you'll see them. And like, oh, man, I'm surprised to see you here. Aren't you that guy? Yeah, aren't you that guy? Like, <laughs> so, and I know people do have that image mm-hmm. to worry about in that way. I feel good. First of all, it's only going to be with one person at a time. It's not like you're going to have a the world on social media. But then we are in a day age where somebody might click. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I don't know, man. It might be. That yeah, one person. That day. This is pre-social <laughs> media being heavy. So, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? But that was the strategy in thinking about it. So even if that's the type of thought that's on your mind, you can find ways. Hey, today, all these remote jobs, yeah. ain't nobody walking up in your house. You know what I mean? Now y'all might pop up on the Zoom meeting and they recognize you. You know, but that's that that's going to be fewer and far between. But yeah, there's too many ways to get jobs, especially with the remote culture. There's so many jobs move on now. You should be able to like get income without worrying about that type of thing happening. But the more important p- part of it, why are we so focused on income? Because, man. Shit is expensive. Shit is expensive. Shit is like, it's an expensive game. If you don't have an investor investing in you, you have to be your own investor. Point blank. But that means you're going to have to work to get that money. Yeah. yeah. But I have this one instance. That the, the tier of whack thing is the most recent example I have of like something that made me go, like, oh, yes, it's cool. We're artists got a job and need one the the first instance that ever made me like kind of look at it differently this had to be like 20 20 maybe 16 or 15 and this one i was like interning for this label i worked for and at the time we were working with this pretty well respected legendary rapper um, i will say um i want to say his name but like no pretty big guy like if i said his name who was affiliated with most people like oh i know that guy i would never forget this bro I was driving him around Atlanta because he had to go get some clothes for a show. He asked me, could I take him to Walmart so he could like send his baby mom like a money order or something. So we got to Walmart and we stand in line and I seen him do something I'd never seen a rapper do in my life. I watched him check his bank account. <laughs> and it fucked me up because I'm like, bro, like you like a like a big rapper, you know what I'm saying? Like, are you worried that you don't have this eight hundred dollars that you need for when you get? You know what I'm saying? Like, it threw me off because, like, I'm young, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm thinking of it like, man, like, why would he do that as the type of person that, the position that I'm assuming that he's in? You know what I'm saying? Like, why would he do that? And I never asked him about it. I probably would ask him about it today if I ever ran into him. I feel like I asked now, but that was the first time when I thought, like, man, bro, like, so these artists aren't necessarily as financially secure as they might try to make you think. And then, you know, that was the time where I do believe motherfuckers that came out, so I got a job. He probably got roasted for it. Cause I, I, I honestly don't know what he did outside of the money he was making from us. You know, it's like, real. Um, so, like, but you fast forward to the day where we see artists as more, we, artists are way more humanized than artists of yesteryear, right? Um, artists have a lot more freedom to do certain things than artists of yesteryear. And one of those freedoms is that you are free to be a regular person in some capacity if that if that is going to help you make it. Um, especially with like platforms like TikTok, where like now as a now as a music fan, I can literally watch my favorite artist go from being a Starbucks barista to having a hit song, right? And I can watch the whole journey. So now you having a job is serious to you, right? Sean, this is how you make your livelihood, this is how you make your livelihood, this is how you afford to invest in yourself. But to me as a fan, this is just another chapter in the book. You know what I'm saying? This is just another part of another add on to the story that, yeah. that makes me like you or, or dislike you more, or relate to you or not relate to you more. Right. So, um, I think that, you know, what artists who do have jobs have to start thinking is like, Hey, one, nobody has to know, like you said, bro, you can get a job in a space where people would never figure it out. I got a, I got a, um, well, I had an artist homie that for a long time, worked as like a delivery driver in a couple of cities over. Like he wasn't doing it. Like I'm going out here to do it because motherfuckers here probably don't recognize me because of the type of music I make. So I'm safe out here, right? So like you can always get a job in, so like you said, remote or in something where people can't really tell it's you. But then secondly, you have to remember, bro, like, like nobody cares. Like the only people who care are the fans that don't know any better, right? right? Or even like industry people. Some industry people as well. Like, damn, you got, you're doing five million monthly listens. You got a job. Why the fuck you got a job? Let me get you in the van so I can get you in Those type of people care, you know what I'm saying? But like fans, consumers, most of them get it, you know what I'm saying? Like, especially if you are not like super mainstream, 
it doesn't surprise them to learn that like you might have other things you have to do to make money outside of you. Now, if you like mainstreaming up, that's when it gets dangerous. You know what I'm saying? To tell motherfuckers you need a day job. That's when it gets now you're playing with fire. But if you below mainstream, like, nobody nobody cares. Right. I mean, at some point you become too big of a risk to have certain jobs anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Every time you're captain this Burger King. You know? I'm talking about that type of artist. That's a whole other thing. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I think people artists have to realize that the one even if people did have an opinion like look this is your dream now you gonna let people's opinions like that stop your dream tracks now it, it doesn't make sense and then two shit it's all marketing fuck it like if, if you go viral because you got a job <laughs> then damn it you got some more attention while you were making money you get more money from making that m- money yeah. so like i wouldn't stress on that either now that's what your music did. Exactly. Cause that'll probably be make people more endeared to you. Mm-hmm. They want to listen harder. New people will discover you and then listen to your music. And if it's good, that just creates more fans. Mm-hmm. You know, it being bad, it probably wouldn't become a story. Yeah. And sometimes the fans will try to save you, but they're like, oh no, your music too good for you to be working at McDonald's. Mm-hmm. We about to run this shit up, you know what I'm okay. saying? To get you out of there. I've seen that. The story. Yeah, I've seen that, bro. I've seen that happen before. Where, like fans just go above and beyond because they Going about a procession, like, oh no, like you doing this and this is taking like your job is the reason why you can't spend all day talking to me on Twitch. No, it's dead. Let me donate some money to you. You know what I'm saying? So you can yeah. leave that shit. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy the lengths that fans go to for shit like that. So I'm here for it, man. Like I said, like if you just, you know, really don't want it out there like that for whatever reason. I know we had a client one time that was like a lawyer and he didn't want his job out there because he didn't want the music stuff to come back to his law firm, right? We we've had examples of like that before where I'm like, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Even if you just don't want to share it, you don't have to share every aspect of your life with your audience. You know what I'm saying? But get a job, bro. Like, if you're not making no money for your music, you ain't got no investors, no rich friends or homies, bro. You're like, suck it up and get a job, bro. Because if you don't, you know, like we said, this shit's expensive. You know what I'm saying? This shit costs money. Even, you know, not even just off of marketing and shit, but bro, just to create costs money. You know what I'm saying? This is like being a creator in general is, a, is an expensive hobby. You know what I'm saying? Like all these this shit we got in here, man. This, I'm looking at at least about, you know, I ain't trying to count our pockets, but it's at least about, you know, about 10 bands and equipment, you know what I'm saying, just to shoot this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, which, you know, and so you think about like the investment artists have to make, bro, you need studio time, you need, co- you need studio time, cover art, mixing and mastering just to get the song out to maybe make money, bro. That's crazy. You can't even put yourself in the race without spending money, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, bro, do what you got to do, you know? That's how I look at it. Like you said, don't let, don't let, don't let an eight-hour shift stop you from your dreams, bro. Like, right. <laughs> People's opinion about that eight-hour shift stop you from your dream. And that's it. That's simple. This is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.